Christ, that's an odd boy, man. It can do. Look at your beauty ready, Reckless. Adita, you're a harmless. For fella!
that for that. The shoe to the man. Bail sleepily on the stairs. Fully at the Hestas. I grace it yourself. Alunga nu, ferret, quar of serve, chat. Have any gold for rent day. 
Hestes Komas. Hey, hey, Hestes Nu. Spedeman Yara. Spedeman Gaenda Yarwe Shetan. Yarwe Men Gokken Men's Bell. Yefe Mea Bunsterende Oni Suwara Serpent Shetan. Ikam Ferende Nu. Let me know what. Send. An are to hear it. A creed of fortune. Set it young.
William Marshall and Nicola de la Haye had saved the city, and with it, the kingdom. William Marshall's success in retaking Lincoln was an overwhelming victory for the Royalists. The rebel barons had been defeated, and their French allies driven out of England altogether. William Marshall now focused on creating a stable kingdom for the young King Henry III. To maintain the backing of the rebels, in 1217, a royal seal of approval was given to a reissued Magna Carta, limiting the power of the monarchy. Many barons held lands in both England and Normandy, but now they faced a choice. On which side of the channel would they make their home? Many chose England. The cross-channel kingdom was over, establishing a clear English identity. But the impact of the Normans on England's evolution is still felt today. Almost a thousand years later, the surviving Norman castles and cathedrals still dominate the landscape. In the midst of the modern city, William the Conqueror's fortress, the Tower of London, remains a powerful reminder of their legacy. but it's the unseen influence of the Normans that endures. The Norman invasion changed the English language and established the foundations of modern parliament and governance. And it's all because one man, William the Conqueror, claimed the English crown that he believed by rights was his. The Normans conquered a country and changed the course of England forever. Some events leave a deep mark on history, but none on the land. William of Normandy stood ready for battle at the base of a hill. The high ground belonged to King Harold of England and his Anglo-Saxon army. Here, on this hilltop, the fate of England would be decided. William's Norman army made the first charge, launching a direct assault on the shield wall. Set, 
Though William's army fought fiercely against the shield wall, it would not yield. As one man fell, another took his place. Overlapping shields in tight formation made for a near impenetrable barrier. Realizing his army could not break the shield wall, William called for a retreat. He aimed to lure the Anglo-Saxons into a false sense of victory, causing them to break formation. William's feigned retreat was working. The Anglo-Saxon army broke their shield wall formation, leaving gaps for William to make a move. With Harold's men no longer in shield wall formation, William could pick them off as they charged. The Anglo-Saxons had deployed rows of spearmen to push back the invaders, but William had an answer. His sharp-eyed archers. arms reinforced William's army. Anglo-Saxon archers joined the fray, and the Normans' deadly cavalry ready to charge. But first, William's forces had to eliminate the enemy spearmen, whose sturdy pole arms could easily bring down a horse. threat of spearmen cleared from the field, William's cavalry was free to charge at the Anglo-Saxon archers. Anglo-Saxon army was in disarray. Their shield wall had been neutralized and their numbers were dwindling. 
Now the only thing standing between William and victory was King Harold himself. The last of Harold's men encircled their king, prepared to lay down their lives to save his. Saxon King Harold had fallen. In the confusion, some loyal soldiers fought to the death, while others scattered in panic. Leaderless and defeated, the last of the Anglo-Saxon army fled for their lives. The Normans celebrated victory over the English king, but William's quest to rule England was just beginning.